right, welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Sitting in now with us, uh, our second guest, total college sports and CBS radio network analyst, Tim Doyle. What's up, Tim? Artie, what's going on? I mean, how about Angel? <laughs> Performed what, at a what restaurant about that my parents were at. When I first saw him, I thought I had action on him in the fourth race at Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a jockey. Real quick, before, uh, before we get to Angel, I got to read this. I got to pay some bills, as they say in the business. I want to thank... French Quarter's guest apartments for being our New York City hotel. Let them be your headquarters in New York City. Go to FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. That's FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. It's good stuff over there. And yet, no, Angel is, I don't know, like, how tall are jockeys? I mean, he's 4'11", 4'9". He could qualify for a jockey, the right? The biggest no, he's thing He's 5'2", with... he said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe, but, but he says he's 5'2". though. figure he's 4'11". Uh, right. Latino men had three inches. Well, the biggest thing with jockeys is weight, right? Yeah. He's going to be under 110. He's very thin, very thin. How about I got married today? Oh, get out of here. Swear to God? No, no. you did Swear to God, I got married today, but it's not official. What Went down and got the license today. I'm oh, getting well, married yeah. well, at a Catholic you, church. Well, so you, you didn't get married then. Well, you I mean, the document that was printed today. Well, you got a license. I mean, yeah. in Catholic church, yeah, you got to go to the pre cana and uh, the, the funniest thing was... Basically, you got a driver's license. You haven't crashed into a mountain yet. Well, yeah, I got... Why does everyone say the same thing about that? Well, I don't know. Listen, I mean, it's an old joke to make fun of marriage. I'm sure you'll be fine. Well, how about, yeah. you know, I'm Catholic. <laughs> My girl and I, she's a saint. We go to church every Sunday, so you got to go through a pre cana Do you really? Every Sunday. Every Sunday. It's, it's rare for a demographic of I my age. I do that also. pre cana is brutal. So wait. And I'm not Catholic. There's a questionnaire before the pre cana Right. Now, my girl's a cancer nurse. She's a saint on earth. I grew up in Queens. My dad was a bartender really his whole life. Is that really what she does? She's a yeah. cancer nurse? Yes. My God, right. So you really did get this amazing woman. So there's 181 questions. So it's like, does your spouse's drinking concern you? I was like, I, uh, it doesn't concern me, but I know what she's going to put. Does your spouse's late nights concern you? I was like, so I go in there to meet with the priest. I'm like... Yeah, he goes, oh, it seems like you really, uh, you got a tall hill to climb here. I was like, yeah, I'm not oh really doing God. too well to start off. <laughs> Listen, wow. much luck. You're going to be fine. It seems like you got a good head on your shoulders. Uh, if I can throw out the name Kendall Gill. <laughs> oh. What happened with I'm this? Happy, I'm a, happy the head's still there. You got into a fight with Kendall Gill a couple of months ago at a CSN taping. Can you give us the details of this? It was, um, I was off a panel show. It was something similar to this. And he was not on the show. And afterwards... He approached me. Is he also an analyst? He's working as an analyst? Kendall he works Gale. for that company and um, approached me, wasn't happy about what I said about his analyst work. What and, did you say about it? Well, there's a call at the end of the game, and I thought he was wrong. He said he, I, I thought he was acting a very hometown call away. It was a goaltending call. It was a Nuggets-Bulls game. To me, I was watching the game. It looked like an easy call. So it wasn't like I didn't degrade him in any way. It was you just, just sort of disagreed with him. Yeah. That's what we get paid to do. Right. I, mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I, was, I break down sports. And I think me. people are getting more and more confrontational on that side. They're not going to let stuff go. I think, and I think networks like for people to do that because it it's, makes for good, you know, good copy. So, good, uh, absolutely. Good I mean, that, that, that's good radio, good television. So after the show is over, I'm leaving. I got an overcoat, suit and tie on. I'm walking out of the building, and he confronted me. So... Yeah, it was something that I, I, I knew it was coming. That's why it didn't end up badly. That's why I, I, I really have not talked about the issue publicly. This is but walking out of the hotel later? Walking out of the office. Of yeah. the office, okay. How about he's a professional boxer? Former. So, former so what fights. actually did he do, Tim? Wow. So, um, what did he do, actually? I, he, did he punch it, you? Here's the thing. It was written up in 45 different publications. Why? The guy who witnessed the event was sitting where you were. He saw the whole thing. He did yeah. it in the newsroom. be no different than walking outside here. So... It was a crazy event. It was something that obviously uh, there was a lot of publicity about. And, right. and, but it was something that I believe I handled in the right way. My well, career is going like this, up, it, up. It and for like a guy to did. do that, I mean, how mad do you got to be to punch someone? But it sounds like you did. So in other words, so after he punched, he punched you, you yeah. what happened? It was a full-blown fight? I mean, guy, I'm 6'6", 230. He's 6'6", 240. I mean, it was some bit, uh, as he's approaching me, I was like, oh, I really hope someone steps in here because... I knew something was going on. I've gotten in enough fights in the Hamptons and the Jersey Shore. I knew something was going down. Oh, those Hamptons fights. Yeah, well, calm down. No, I see, no I see, here's the thing. The Jersey you're, ready, Shore, you're ready for Rikers the, Island. The Jersey Shore and the Hamptons get a bad rap. You know, eight guys from Brooklyn get a house out in the Hamptons. I wouldn't really say that's high-class no, Hamptons, well, but that goes on. No, well, listen, it goes on. They put in a bunch of money, and they go out there hopefully to beat up, you know, jerk-offs on the Hamptons. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, listen, you're 6'6", six, six, how much? 230? That means you're, you're big enough to bang the Barachi. Yeah. Did right. you see this? Did you see this? Yeah, I, I, I was. Yeah, of course. The, the guy we think we banged on the 39 Packers was 6'6, 
Two forty nine. He was as big. He was as big as the door. So now, how did this resolve? How did this resolve itself? You know, Kendall Gill lost his job. Nothing's happened to me. So really? you could tell who was right. It was his was, fault. It was his fault. Yeah, you know, we're all grown men in the job we're in. I mean, did you go drive down to the, the fan studios when you had an argument with Chris Russo? <laughs> no. yeah, maybe you thought about it for like eight seconds, but you were like, "Yo, well, radio, radio." I will say more than anything can get heated. Uh, people get real passionate on the radio. And, uh, you know, I've had, you know, threats back and forth, but all, always just yelling. But Chris know? Russo went crazy on you, Artie, and he didn't even <laughs> see the clip. Do you remember that? He was going nuts. No, I give Chris a break. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but for, I'm sure for a tenth of a second, you were like, I'd love to knock that guy out. No, I, I like Russo, and everything he was saying was just Chris Russo. And it was just, for me, that whole thing was selling my book. Every time someone brought up the, the Joe Buck thing, he just sold another book for me. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but, uh, you know, uh, no, I never got like that way with him. It's funny, like, maybe some other comics here and there, you get mad at stuff because people uh, accuse different people of things and and uh, when they're actually guilty of it. A lot of comics steal material. Yeah, stealing. That get, I mean, because that's taking your livelihood away. That's physically, to a comedian, it's taking your money. Yeah, you tell know? me this. You have a few drinks with a comedian. Do you tell your jokes? Are you more protective of what you say? Uh, it, it, that's a great question. There's some comics where absolutely not. I don't tell them anything about my act because I know they'll 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 rip it off. Absolutely. And it's maybe not just at Yuck Yucks on the road. They might end up doing it on the Tonight Show some guy. Uh, so I used to do at uh, one of the networks I worked there. I worked with Gene Cady, the former Purdue coach, comb over hair, the slick yeah. dog. He's now at St. John's. Yeah. So him and I would do the show, post-game, halftime show, and I could never tell him what I'm going to say because he would go out there and talk about rebounding, and I was talking about offensive ball possession. Would he use the same analogy you would? He would steal word for word wow. exactly what I said. But I, I couldn't do anything to him. The guy's in the Hall of Fame. He's 70-something years old. Well, that's <laughs> just, how he got in the Hall of Fame, ripping people off. My head. But, but, here, but here's, you're making a great point because you're in a, you're in a, a, a racket where – the same thing's been said and over said 4,000 times, just reworded. So if you come up with a unique, original stance on something, that's a big deal. And if someone just rips that off, that's, that, that would aggravate the hell out of well, me. Well, what we have a hard time doing, and I, was, I didn't play in the Super Bowl or anything, is we have to have personality but never cross the line. Right. Because we, didn't, we were not Hall, hall of is, Famers. We're not difficult. Magic Johnson. Yeah. They want us to be edgy and to be creative, but don't cross that line. Right. And, and that's a hard line. Now, I understand they pay us handsomely for that, but to take over that role is it, tough, and you got to be intelligent. I mean, yeah. You know, some athletes, we have our times where we're you not have that to bright. Be, you have to be <laughs> unique. You have to be unique in what you say and, and edgy, right, but still not be offensive and whatever. And, and uh, you know, it, it's hard what you do. So when you come up with something that is original and a cool different angle on something and someone rips it off, you want to strangle it. So I, I'm, not, I'm out in the Midwest now in Chicago, and it's been really good to me my career, but... You know, I, I, I'm not Midwestern. I grew up in Queens, and, you know, I drive to Iowa, a small town Ohio, and, you know, I, I rustle, ruffle some feathers because they just don't know my edge. I, 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 with comedy, I go through that all the time. So First, here's the thing. Uh, June, June 15th, I'm getting married. Right, so? You're going to be in Chicago. Uh, what, is that where you're getting married in Chicago? Park West, yeah. Well, can, you, can you come to the cocktail hour or something? What time is the cocktail hour? Six to seven. How about I, the church is at three? I know I you, could, one could, time you were Catholic. I could probably make it. I, I know you're not wetting my beak how to come on the away, show, but how, maybe you can make an appearance. How far away is the Park West? Danny, can I do this? Where's the church? Where? Dan knows Chicago. Yeah, again. everything is within eight minutes. I'm getting married at Southport in Fullerton. Oh, I'm it's right put, there. Yeah. You're right, 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 it's right next to... Uh, it's and right and next. you're, you're going to be on Where's Armitage Park, and Clark. Park West is where, Danny? It is at Armitage and Clark. So you're five minutes. Wow. Really? Can now, it, what time is my first my first show? I got two shows. Yeah, no, I, I saw it. The first one's at 7 or, or 7. Or eight, yeah. Okay, so I can get over there. Why, is it a big deal if I come to the concert? Yeah, you're a pretty big deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're like, yeah, you're no, a no, national nothing more, celebrity. Nothing more fun than a guy in AA coming <laughs> to your cocktail hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, I, I just want to say, hey, I just point to your uncle. Hey, Mr. Doyle, still going on that dead end street, yeah. huh? <laughs> okay, good luck with that gin and tonic. Uh, how, about, how about I got a family of all Irish, Catholic, Italian. Oh, it's going to be nuts. Wait, meeting. Midwesterners. I my got, girl, my girl's the saint. I'm the cancer nurse. Her family, mom and dad, grew up on a farm. Uh, dude, I mean, they uh, think dude, I'm from uh, Mars. I love Chicago. Uh, it's one of my favorite party towns, just town in general, especially in the summer. And Agreed. I'll be out there with my boy Danny. Maybe we'll come by an Irish Italian wedding next to Wrigley Field in Chicago in June. That sounds like a fun time to me. Maybe we'll stop by. Maybe we'll come by just to give the blessing of. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 no, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah we, we'll, yeah, give, that, the, we'll give the we'll give the Italian <laughs> blessing. 
<laughs> the Jersey Italian blessing to your family and you. For a fee. Uh, I mean, you know, we're not coming for free. <laughs> no, Dan's charging uh, here, a no, fee. Here's the thing with getting married. Every time you turn around, it's not like it's 100 bucks. Right, right. 980, 1275. Every time I turn around, like, oh, 2400 for the trolley. It's like Johnny Dangerously. People Dan get ripped off. You're right. It's like Johnny Dangerously. It'd be like, yeah, it'd be great to see Ma spit again for $900. It's like, yeah, here's $900. <laughs> no, I know. And, it's, and then they get the woman because the woman, it's her day to shine and she will spend anything. She'll spend money on the... Yeah, I know. We so are having it. We are having the electric menorah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not even Jewish. I don't care. <laughs>